Top of the morning to you. I debated about whether or not I should even do a video. I'm still getting over this cold. It's kind of a bummer. But it's not stopping me from running the equipment, getting stuff done. That's just what you got to do when you run your own business. So I'm squeaking out a couple little books here. I only need to do 30 of those. Then we have a ton of other books to print. Some black and white, some color. Laminators running. I got a saddle stitch job that I'm gonna do today. I gotta continue cutting this down because I'm getting another shipment of paper today for jobs that I need to do either today or Monday. And uh, so it's, and I got laminate coming too. Actually, that might be coming on Monday. Uh, I buy a year's worth of laminate to get a better price. Uh, and that stuff has a, a shelf life of about a year. So, yep, just average day. I don't know what's gonna happen. We'll try and catch some on film for you guys. So stick around. We got some 80 pound text here and I ordered it in 19 by 25. 25 is the grain direction. So this is grain long currently. And I'll be cutting it down to 12 by 18. So the grain direction will then be in the 12 inch length. Uh, I buy this for portrait books so that the grain direction is parallel with the spine, like a book like this. So when I need short grain paper, I have to order it folio size and cut it down. I can't order a cut sheet that size. It'd be great if I could, but I can't. They make contraptions that safely open this so you don't cut yourself, but I just do it this way, it's easier. I don't know if it's easier, but. If you cut just the edges of this, opens up like a suitcase. This is a 12 point C1S. This is what I use for all my book covers that are perfect bound. And uh, I typically order this paper in 18 by 12 cut sheet. Uh, but my supplier was out the last time I placed an order so I got larger sheets that I can cut down. It'll be real easy. I only have to make one cut and I'll have a 12 and a half by 19 inch sheet and we'll see how it goes because I might actually just use that as my standard sheet size from now on because I'm getting a, a wider film uh, for my laminator. So I'm gonna cut a bunch of this down and we'll test it out here in a week or so and uh, see how it goes. Then we can get this pallet out of here and we'll have more space for activities. Looks good. What would a video be without making some perfect bound books?
So I thought I'd just impromptu say a little bit about the paper that I keep stocked. Um, so I have, I'm lucky, I have two paper suppliers close by here. So I can get literally tons of paper the next day. So I don't keep a whole lot in stock. I do keep a lot of 60 pound text in stock. That's just because it's like the, the bread and butter of all the books and newsletters and anything at 60 pound. I buy it in high volume so that my price is low and then I pass that savings on to the customer. Right here, this is what I keep in stock that's other than 60 pound text, uncoated text. I keep it real simple. Uh, we got 80 pound text, 100 pound text, 80 pound cover, 100 pound cover, and this is all gloss stuff here. And then as far as uncoated sheets, it's 70 text, 80 text, 100 text, and then 65 cover, 100 cover, 120 cover. I have a little bit of 130 down underneath there. And that's what I keep in stock for day-to-day -day activities. I don't have to keep a lot more than that in stock because I get, if, uh, if there's a special order, I can, I can get something in the next day. But most of the time, I encourage people to fall into one of those categories just for simplicity's sake. Um, also with the coated sheets, I keep uh, 13 by 19, which is the largest sheet size. And I don't bother with any of the 11, 17 or 12 by 18, just to keep it clean and simple. I just get the largest sheet size and that's it. Um, sometimes like on Monday, I have a whole bunch of brochures to run and I just ordered that 12 by 18. Uh, but instead of doing a 13 by 19, that saved like $30 by getting a smaller sheet size. So I do do that every once in a while. Another tip, don't order paper in the morning. Because if you're like me, you place an order in the morning, I guarantee you by the end of the day, somebody else is going to order something that you're going to need to get in there. So just wait till the, you know, towards the end of the day when you can place your order and place it then. And you don't have to mess anybody else's day up to add a case of this or a case of that to your order. So I also stock 14 point C2S and 12 point C1S, both 13 by 19. And I typically keep in here 12 by 18 C1S. But like I said earlier, I'm giving this a try, which is 12 and a half by 19 uh, C1S 12 point. Uh, we'll see how that works. These are my long sheet sizes I use for landscape books. Uh, I'd keep 12 by 25, 12 point. That's for a landscape soft cover book. 12 by 25, 100 pound gloss text, and 13 by 25, 100 pound gloss text. Those two are for if I have to do a hardcover book. What I'll do is I'll print the the wraps here laminate them and then take those to the bindery and they make the cases and case them in then. Now 60 pound text I keep in about four sizes. I order it in uh, three or four sizes and then cut it down to what I need. I have 17 and a half by 11 and a quarter here. That's for portrait books. 12 by 18 I've just recently started ordering that cut down just to save me time. Then we have 17 by 11 for, again, portrait newsletters, portrait booklets, uh, where bleed is not necessary. Uh, then I keep a little bit in 13 by 19, a little bit at 12 and a quarter by 18 and a quarter. And all the different sizes and grain directions are because of the differences between a portrait book and a landscape book, six by nine, five and a half by eight and a half, eight and a half by 11. So depending where you fit in those, whether or not there's bleed or not, that's the sheet that I'll go to for that particular book. Um, so it, it'd be real handy just to do it like a 13 by 19 long grain and a 13 by 19 short grain, but then there'd be a lot of waste too when it comes to trimming and the three knife trimming and all that. So this is the best 
method I found so far um, to do that. And it seems to be working out pretty well. Um, so that's the, the largest amount of paper that I keep in stock is 60 pound text. And uh, that's in the warehouse too. Um, here's, it comes in, uh, shoot, what is it? Uh, 38 by 25 inch there. And then I also get it 17 and a half by 11 and a half. And those are the, the parent sheet sizes. Uh, so, boy, I could probably just talk about paper for a long time. That's the parent sheet size, and that's offset. Uh, that can get complicated. I'd have to look through my, my notes in college to get that straight before I go down that road. Well, it's the end of the day then. So, uh, I got some uh, glasses. Now my peepers have 20-20 vision. I guess I spent way too many hours looking at crop marks and registration marks that my distance vision was uh, not doing the best. So, but now I can see. Uh, anywho, got a ton of work to do on Monday. Got like 800 booklets that will print, laminate, and uh, then we'll stitch those. We got 2,000 brochures down here to do, and we just got like, there's about 1,200 perfect bound books that are coming through the tubes too, so next week is going to be nuts. Hold on to your pants, check in again, and see how I make, I mean, see if I survive next week, but it should be good. So thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment below, see you in the next one.